ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم صلاه وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا سندي يا حبيبي يا طبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اليك واصحابك يا رحمه للعالمين نحمده ونسلم ونسلم على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الامين المكين الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اوف يا اعظم بمن بيسر وسامع مدد قبلائے دی مددے کعبائے امام مددے قادری امن ارائے یا غوث عظم میزنم دنز شیخ احمد زاہا قدر عالم میزنم سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد مسلک سرکار اعلیٰ اعلیٰ حضرت زندہ باد یا الہی مسلک احمد رضا خان زندہ باد حفظ نام و سے رسالت کا جو ذمہ دار ہے سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد حامل فیض رضا مصطفیٰ امداد کن صلی اللہ علیہ نبی رمی و علیہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاۃ وسلم علیہ کے سیدی یا سندی یا حبیبی یا طبیبی یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علیہ علی کا و اصحاب کا یا رحمت العالمین اور پریز از ڈیوٹو مائی اللہ درود ان سلام زبان دا موسف فیک ایگزوٹ ان گلوریفائر اف اللہ سکریشن سیدنا و مولانا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پیس بلیسنگ سیلیٹیشنز اپن دی انبیاء کرام محلب اتھار صحابہ اکرام خلفہ راشدین تبعین تب تابعین ائمہ مشتہدین اولیاء کاملین ان اول دوز فور دی پاتن ٹو لاسٹ ڈے وی تھینک ال مائی اللہ تو از انفنٹ مرسی ان ٹو دی وسیل اف رسول اکرم نور مجسم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فور بلیسنگ اس دی اپرچونٹی ٹو کم ان گیو صلاۃ الجمعہ ان ٹو پروسٹریٹ دس موسٹ ایگزوٹڈ فور بی فور کنٹینیوئنگ وت اس اور کلیکٹیولی direct our hearts our minds and our thoughts towards the holy and the grand court of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in doing so let us together recite the sharif allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa ala muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina wa ala muhammad salatan daimatan maghfuratan tu'addi biha anna haqqal azim alhamdulillah Almighty Allah by his divine grace and by the mercy of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has granted us the month of safar so we are in the holy month of safar al muzaffar after the month of muharram 1445 hijri and when this holy month of safar comes there are numerous barakat and numerous blessings in this month one but for the ahl sunnah wal jamaat when you hear that the month of safar has arrived then the very first thing that comes to mind is it is the month of sayyidi ala hazrat azim wa barakat imam ahl sunnah the shaykh imam muhammad raza khan fazl al bilwi radiyallahu anhu he said that it is the ma hi raza it is the month of raza it is the month of imam ahl sunnah رضي الله تعالى عنه وين من ضمن توكن يو تيلينج ابوت ذا مانث اوف سفر ليت مي جست ميك وان ثينج كلير ذات ذير ار لوت اوف فالس كونسيبتس ذات جو اون اباوت وين كمز تو سفر يو كان باي ا هاوس يو كان موف ان تو ا هاوس يو كان جيت ماريد يو كان دو ذس يو كان دو ذات يو كان دو ايفريثينج ويتش از بيرميسيبل ان سفر ذات يو دو ان اني ادر مان سبحان الله اند ذس از بروفن فروم ذا حديث اوف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذا بيلوف نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هي سيلف سيد that there is nothing there is no ill omen and nothing bad about the month of safar this used to be said from the times of the jah- of jahiliya from the days of ignorance that is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself said nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself said about this month and i'm being brief about it so please if many people ask the same question every year please bear in mind there is no objection to marrying in this month actually there is a narration that the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam married one of the azwaj wa tahrat in this month Allah, if i am not mistaken it was said that on zainab bint jahr subhanallah subhanallah so there is no objection to doing any of these things in the month of uh, safar yes some of the scholars have said that it is a month that in which you should give sadaqat in abundance in other words gifts on the name of your marhums etc so there is that you can do also in any other time but like that there is nothing evil or nothing ill about the month of 
سفر پلیز ڈو کیپ دیٹ ان مائنڈ درود پاک اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه ومن اصحابه مبارك وسلم صلوا عليه صلاه وسلاما عليك يا سيد يا سند يا حبيبي يا طبيب يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه يا رحمه للعالمين so as i was saying when the month of safar comes generally that is sunnah for jamaat we say that this is mahir raza this is the month of ala hadrat imam ahl sunnah ashai imam ahmad raza khan fazl ibn ali radiyallahu anhu and the entire sunni world the entire ahl sunnah world regards say the ala hadrat radiyallahu anhu as imam ahl sunnah and he is that imam of the sunnis that allah almighty sent in a time of difficulty Allah sent him onto the zameen to this earth when the Muslims were facing a very difficult time very catastrophic time when it came to the iman of the Muslims from all four sides there was an attack on the ummah there were those in that zamana the Wahhabis and the Najdis and the Diobatis etc who were saying that the Bilabar Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an ordinary human being like us and this is their belief even today and they were saying that the bilabar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes he has knowledge but his knowledge is not anything superior and they said allah forbid and it is in their books that the knowledge of the bilabar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you look at it then there is nothing special about the knowledge of the bilabar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam the proof of the vastness of the knowledge of shaitan and malak al maut is proven whereas that knowledge for rasul pak is not proven the vastness of his knowledge they said that the bilabar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam does not have knowledge of what is behind the wall they said that to celebrate the maulud of rasulullah and to commemorate the maulud of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is like praying to the hindu deity kanaiya they compared these things to the bilabar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in the time like this and these are only some of the things that they said and they were writing in a time like this allah almighty sent ala hazrat ali ibn barakat radiyallahu anhu it was in that time that they were saying that muslims cannot go to ajmer sharif muslims cannot go to sarkar e khaja khaja gan khaja gharib un nawaz you can't go to any wali they said if you travel and they wrote if you travel from a distance with the intention of visiting the darbar of a saint the cover of a saint it was shirk you were out of the folds of islam you cannot travel towards the graves of the pious yet the bilabar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam made it a habit to go to ohad always subhanallah subhanallah the bilabar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam made it a habit to go to ohad especially on the special day of ohad once a year the bilabar rasul definitely went on that day so the journey of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the sacred mosque to the court of the shuhada of ohad to make dua there would it mean ma dalla what was the law now they were going to give on the beloved nabi la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a time like this in such a difficult time almighty allah saved a personality who will attach us who will attach us to the sacred feet of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam when those who claim to the muslim claim to be muslims were trying to detach us from the sacred feet of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the west and the kuffar have always done this always remember when there is a storm outside the ship it's easier to control but when the storm is inside the ship it's very difficult Okay. And they have always tried to cause harm within Islam from those who call themselves Muslims. And this is the most detrimental thing and the most dangerous thing. Look, if your enemy is your neighbor, you can fend off his attacks quite easily. But if your enemy is your brother who lives in your house, it is absolutely difficult because you will not even see it coming. you will not even see the attack coming and the kuffar have always used this ploy and trick that let islam be harmed from within all the deviants and all the bad mazhabs that have come today have come from within they became external forces but they were internal they came out from within and their aim was always to bring a new concept of islam there is no new concept of islam subhanallah 
There is no new concept of Islam. Islam is Islam. This is the deen of Almighty Allah. And this is that deen of Almighty Allah which was the deen of Adam alayhi salatu It was always and is always the deen of Almighty Allah. Okay? Now, the Kuffar in the West, they've always tried this. This has been their, their, their very strong strategy over the past and even today. That they tried to weaken from within. And they've tried to bring in concepts through those who call themselves Muslims to distance the Muslims from the court of the pious. Why? Because they know that if you become close to the pious, you are successful because they know. Even the kuffar know, they have studied the word of Allah. They look at the Quran. They look at the Hadith of Mustafa. They have teams built for this. They have teams that work. Look at the past documents. Look at the book that they wrote, a thousand pages on the destruction of Islam. Look at other books that have been written in the past. They have always planned this. They have specific teams that sit day and night and work on how they should undermine the deen of Allah. And his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa how to undermine the Muslims. Islam they cannot undermine. They cannot weaken this deen. But they can weaken the followers of the deen. Okay? And they've always tried this. And they know very well because they have been studying. And they know very well that one of the easiest ways to weaken the foundation of the Muslim is to distance him from the pious. Why they know this? Because they know Allah says, Ya yu wa They know this that Allah says, Oh believers, fear Allah. So the first thing they try to do is to remove from you the fear of Allah. When a Muslim, when a Muslim walks into a cinema or a place of entertainment while the azan is going, what does it tell you? Where is the fear of Allah? Let's be open about this. Where is the fear of Allah? You shouldn't be there at any other time. But the person is deaf to the adhan at that time. Why? Because the fear is going away. So what have they done? They have put those obstacles and those hurdles in your way that without them telling you do not fear Allah, you stop fearing Allah. And when a servant does not fear Allah, he has opened himself to the attack of shaitan. He has opened himself to the attack of shaitan. Keep this in mind. And they know this. And we play ourselves for fools. We play ourselves for fools. You cannot say that they are the ones that cause all of it. They put the obstacle in the way. We fool ourselves. We know that Allah is saying, Oh believers, fear Allah. We know that Allah is saying that. But we do not pay attention to this because we want to taste the pleasure of the dunya. We want to satisfy our friends and our peers. We want to satisfy our work colleagues. We want to satisfy those in the community that we are with. We want to please everybody. But what kind of pleasure is that? By which you please the dunya and you do not please your Rabb. Isn't that a question that we need to ask ourselves? Are we not falling into the trap of falling into the trap of the kuffar? Are we not falling prey to those who are trying to remove us from the remembrance of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam? This is something that is very important to think about, especially in this time that we live in. Look at the Western influence. Look at what the kuffar are trying to do throughout the world. What is the objective? To get power over countries? No. That is just by the way. The objective is to weaken the believers. They have always tried this. They have always done this from the very early days. Look at it in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam made da'wa in nubuwa. When he announced his nubuwa, a'lan nubuwa. When he made his a'lan. When he claimed and announced his nubuwa. When he made a'lan of his nubuwa, remember the Nabi did not become a Nabi at 40. He only announced his nubuwa at 40. Okay? When he announced his nubuwa, then he said that I am Allah's Rasul. Okay? Then at that time, what did the kuffar do? What did they do? Those who were the closest opposed. But what they did, they made offers, we will give you the best women of the tribes. 
We will give you how much wealth you want. If you want leadership and kingship, we will give that to you. But do not make this announcement. Do not make this elan. This is to it. This is Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But look at today. What are the offers that come from the West and from the Kuffar? Today, women are being said, we are giving you freedom. Kuffar give you freedom. We give you freedom. This is not freedom. This is being shackled to the chains of Jahannam. Freedom is what Rasul gave 1445 years. Freedom is what Islam gave. That when the women were being dragged on the streets, then Allah's Nabi وسلم, said, Jannah is under her feet. This is the Izzat that came from Islam. When the daughters were being buried alive, the beloved Nabi وسلم, opposed this and gave them light in a time of darkness. So the Kuffar have always tried to undermine the believers and weaken the believers, and sadly people have fallen for this ploy. So remember, they have always tried different methods, but one of the methods, one of the methods, was to put those from within to cause destruction. To bring ideology and beliefs that are so corrupt that a man will think that they are good to you, but they are destructive to your deen and iman. Like it is being said, do not go to the mazars of the holy, it will become shirk. But Quran is saying, وَكُونُوا مَا sadiqin," And remain in the company of the pious. Be with the pious, be attached to the pious. If you are attached to the pious, they will attach you to the court of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is none in the creation of Allah that is closer in the court of Allah than Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is that beloved of Allah that is unique in every way. And we go on saying this, that why as a Muslim do you need to look for a role model in those who don't even know how to make istinja. Why do you need to look for a role model in them when you have the greatest example in the greatest of Allah's creation, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Rasul Akram Nuri Mujassam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The entire world, the Muslims know, the West knows, the Kuffar know that the point of the direction of the hearts of the believers, look, the direction of our face is the Kaaba Mu'azzama. The direction of our faces is the Kaaba Mu'azzama. But the world knows that the direction of our hearts is Muhammad Rasulullah. They know that the direction of our hearts is Madinah Tul Our hearts, our head is in the court of Allah. But our heart is directed towards Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's love because we know Ibadat is for Allah. But if our Nabi didn't bring this ibadat and this salah, we would not bow our head in the court of Allah. Our hearts are in the court of Muhammad Rasulullah And it is through this that we are accepted in the court of Almighty Allah. Ibadat is for Allah alone. But the heart is submitted in the court of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi They know this. And this is why they have always tried to distance us from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ala Hadrat Adimul Barakat. Imam Ahl Sunnah radiallahu anhu, he came in a time when this turmoil was taking place. And in that time he stood up by himself. And when they said that you cannot go to the madar of the awliya, he said, go to Ajmer and don't say Ajmer, say Ajmer Sharif. Don't just say it by its name, say that it is a blessed place. Because Sultan al-Hind Khajah Khajagan radiallahu anhu is present there. He said, go towards the pious servants of Allah. When they said, that do not put flowers on the graves of your parents. He said, place it, this is the way of the beloved Rasul He taught us that this is the way, this is the way towards the court of Almighty Allah. When they said, do not say that the beloved Nabi knows this and knows that. He said that, What other unseen is going to be hidden from him when Allah is not hidden from the sight of the beloved Rasul? Sallallahu alayhi wa When Allah has blessed him with his divine vision. What did Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakat do? Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakat preserved our Iman. He protected our Iman. When he spoke about the beloved Nabi, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when they said, look at the difference. They said, he is like us. This and this and this. And Allah Hadrat said, what Habib Sharif was reading, wa kamal e husn e huzur. He said, yeah, he said, wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa kamal e husn e huzur hai, 
کہ گمان نقص جہاں نہیں یہی پھول خار سے دور ہے یہی شمع ہے کہ دھواں نہیں وٹ از اٹ مین آئی ٹو گیو یور ٹرانسلیشن آف اٹ ہی سیٹ اعلیٰ حضرت عظیم البرکت سیٹ سو پرفیکٹلی اسپلینڈڈ از مائی بلوڈ نبیز بیوٹی سو پرفیکٹلی وہ کمال ہے حسن حضور ہے سو پرفیکٹلی اسپلینڈڈ لسن ود یور ہارٹ سو پرفیکٹلی اسپلینڈڈ از مائی بلوڈ نبیز بیوٹی وداؤٹ روم فار اینی فولٹ is undoubtedly flawless so beautiful so perfectly splendid is my beloved nabi's beauty without room for any faults is undoubtedly flawless it is only this flower which is completely thornless in reality it is only this flower which is completely thornless it is only this flame which is completely smokeless rasul akram nur mujassam sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at the beauty Look at the beauty in the manner of praising the beloved Rasul. This who did this? Allah Hazrat Adimul Barkat. Imam Ahle Sunnah radiyallahu anhu praised the beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this manner and this is that Imam Ahle Sunnah radiyallahu anhu that he was so absorbed in the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said if you desire my life I will sacrifice my life. He said if you desire my life I will sacrifice my life. If you desire my wealth I will give all my wealth. If you desire my life, I will sacrifice my life. If you desire my wealth, I will surrender all my wealth. But there's one thing that you will never sacrifice. And he said that is the love and the honor of the beloved Rasul. That I will never sacrifice. Why? Because he said the beloved Rasul is the essence of your Iman. Is the foundation of your Iman. Okay? That is why it has, been, it has come in Bukhari Sharif. What has come? Clearly mentioned that the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what? Is Iman. It is Iman. That is why Allah Hazrat said Allah ki sarta wa qadam shan hai hai. Insan nahi insan. Wo insan hai hai. Quran to Iman batata hai in hai. Iman ye kehta hai meri jaan. From his Mubarak head To his Mubarak feet, the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the manifestation of Almighty Allah. 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 Insan nahi insan, wo insan hai. A human not like any other human, but that most powerful superhuman is he. Quran to Iman batata hi hai. That when you ask the Quran who is he, Quran says he is Iman. When you ask the Quran who is he, Quran says he is Iman. اور ایمان یہ کہتا ہے میری جان ہے یہ and when you ask ایمان who is ایمان says he is my soul this is what امام احمد رضا taught us this is what اعلیٰ حضرت عظیم البرکت رضی اللہ عنہ taught us he taught us that if you want success in this dunya then you will get it at the court of the beloved رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم you will get it at the قدمناز of the beloved رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم you know this is that court of the beloved رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم that the pious and the beloved servants of Allah have said that even even if you have nothing you have no wealth you have no power you have no strength you have nothing but you have the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have everything you have everything you are the wealthiest man your true wealth is not based on what is in your bank account your true wealth is not based on what you have saved inside your account Your true wealth is based on what you have saved in your heart. Allah. It is what you have preserved in your heart. And that is the love of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because that money that you have will not be of any benefit to you in your grave. But that love that you have, Lahadamay ishka rukhay shah tadaag. Lahadamay ishka rukhay shah tadaag leke chale. Andheri raat suni thi chiraag leke chale. That when you enter your dark grave and there is no light there. Six foot deep. No. I said this before. Yes. Closed from all sides. All those who love you will shut you in and walk away. Yes. Nobody, those who you brought food for every day. No. Those who you made sure that the rent was paid. No. For whom you made sure that I went out of my way to pay the bond. For those who you did all your efforts so that they drive the best cars. No. For those whom you made all the efforts so they eat the best food. No. But when they put you in there, nobody is going to stay two minutes. Yes. Nobody is going to stay. All of them will shut you up from the top and even pour sand on top of you. That's the command. And they will leave. And they will leave. And nobody will be there. 
But at that time, آپ کی طلعت کو دیکھا جان حضور تاج شریعہ سے یا رسول اللہ آپ کی طلعت کو دیکھا جان دی قبر میں پہنچا تو دیکھا آپ ہیں یا رسول اللہ when I went to my grave nobody was there for me but when I went in I found you there یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم okay this is the important factor this is the very important factor that you have nothing But you have the lamp of the love of Rasulullah sallallahu in your heart. That dark grave will not be dark; it will be bright. It will be radiant because of that spot of love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if you, and you and I, sincerely love Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then know that the love of Allah cannot be attained without the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is what Sayyid Allah Hadrat Ali Mubarakat radiallahu taught us all his life. This was the lesson. This was the great lesson that leave alone you. He taught us that leave alone you. We are humans. Leave alone us wanting to be attached to the sacred feet of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When the beloved Nabi went for Maharaj, the Arsh of Allah was embracing the feet of Muhammad Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So if you want to be successful in this dunya, and if you want to be successful in your kabr, and you want to be successful in your hashab. Then you and I need to attach ourselves more towards Shafa Yomun Rasul, towards Him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who will intercede for us on that day. None can intercede on that day before the beloved Nabi opens the doors of intercession. Nobody. So this dunya, remember, is temporary, and the great personalities like Sayyid Allah Hadrat Adi Mubarakat Radhi Allahu. Whom Allah sent to protect our deen and our iman, have fulfilled their responsibility. They have fulfilled their responsibility. Subhanallah. Look at how He put the love in our hearts. Look at how He inspired and instilled the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our hearts. That He taught this in India. He taught this love in Bareilly Sharif. And more than hundred years have gone by, and after Juma on a Friday, people are standing in the masjids of Durban and saying, "Mustafa Jalal Rahmat Bilahu Salam, Shamay Bazme Hidayat Bilahu Salam." The love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spread in this manner. The corners of the world, you will hear the salam upon the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he sent salam to the Nabi, he didn't say one; he said hundreds and thousands of salam upon the Nabi, millions of salam upon the Nabi. Billions of salam upon the Nabi in one single sentence. Why? To teach you that the Nabi said, the Nabi said that the one who wishes to be closest to me, the closest to me on the day of Kiamat, will be those who send durud in abundance upon me. Look at what Allah Hazrat Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. He freshened our lips with sending abundant durud and salam in the corner of the Bilal Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I say to people that Allah Hazrat Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not just one personality; he is a subject. Allah Hadrat Adi Mubarakat is a subject, and inshallah during this month of Safar we will discuss this subject. We'll speak about the service that he has done to the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaah, the service that he has done to protect the Iman of the Muslims, the Iman of the Ahlul Sunnah. Today that we are going to Ajmer Sharif, today that we are saying Ya Hussain, today that we are saying Ya Baba Farid, today that we are saying. Ya Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, this is the barakat of the fatwa of Allah Hadrat Adi Mubarakat Radiallahu Anhu. May Allah keep us firm on Mazhab Mahazab Mazhab Ahl Sunnah, and may Allah keep us away from the deviants. Allah keep us away from those who are misled. People ask that should I go and pray namaz behind, you know, and passing this place? It's not a place of Ahl Sunnah or Jamaah. Should I go and pray? I say go and pray at your house. Pray at your house, because prayer cannot happen, salah cannot happen behind that person. Who has this akida that my nabi is not aware of my heart? It cannot happen behind that person who says that the nabi does not know what's happening behind the wall. It cannot happen behind that person who says that the nabi's knowledge is nothing compared to the knowledge of shaitan. Say, but manan, I don't hear. I say, when people want to give you poison, they won't give you a bottle saying poison. They will give you biryani and mix poison inside. They will give you what you like and they will mix the poison inside. Be aware of it. If you want to know where they said, when they said. Ask me. Books are present. We can show you the reality. But the reason I'm saying this is so that you understand that Imam Ahlul Sunnah Taala Dilawan protected us from this in the zamana, and he taught us that Bakhuda Khuda Kajehi Hadar. If you want success in your life, 
then come to the feet of the beloved Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Come there where 70,000 angels descend every morning. And come there where 70,000 angels descend every evening, sending salutation about the beloved Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Come there where the sun rises, not to give light, but to take light. Come there to where the sun rises, not to give light, but to take light. And come there to where the moon comes out, not to show its beauty, but to accept Forget to accept charity of beauty from the court of Rasulullah. That is where we have to come. When the stars look down all over over the world, throughout the world in the sky, when you look at the stars, when the stars look down, they look down so that you may look at their beauty. But in Medina, when the stars look down, they are looking at the court of the beloved Rasul. But in reality, subhanallah, when they look, they are not looking down, they are looking up. In reality, they are looking up. Because greater than that is the court of the beloved Rasul. If you keep this in your mind, you will realize how fortunate we are. How khush nasib we are that we are calling ourselves believers. How khush nasib we are to say that we love our beloved Rasul. Everything in this dunya is the sadqa of Muhammad Rasulullah. And this is what Imam Ahmad taught when he said, Sabse awla wa ala, hamara nabi, sabse bala wa wala. Hamara Nabi, Apne Mawla ka piyara, Hamara Nabi, Dono Alam ka dula, Hamara Nabi, Khalq se awliya, awliya se rusul, aur rasulo se ala, Hamara Nabi, aur jis ko dena hai, dene ko moh chahiye, dene wala hai sacha, Hamara Nabi, wa maali ni bilaak sara 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 maali Special dua before I end for Huzur Sayyidi Muhaddi Sayyid Kabir, Hazrat Allama, Asham Tiziyah Mustafa Al Qadri, and Jadid Kibla. Yesterday, Huzur Sayyidi Muhaddi Sayyid Kabir had a car accident and uh, quite a severe car accident, but Alhamdulillah, Hazrat has come out of that without any major injury, just a mild injury to the shoulder. Huzur uh, Mufti Shahid Raza, Mufti Abu Yusuf, were also in the vehicle, Alhamdulillah. Uh, they have come out all safe from the vehicle by the Karam of Allah and the mercy of Rasulullah. So, but we make dua for his uh, swift recovery for the mild uh, injury that he has and the others that were there. And we make dua that Allah keeps the side karma for our mashayikh over our heads for a long time. Huzure Sayyidi Muhadis Kabir, Huzure Qaidi Milad, and all the mashayikh of the Sunni for Jama'ah. May Allah grant them good health and long life. And may Allah protect them and preserve them. So special dua for Hazrat and for all the others that were slightly injured in that uh, accident. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them uh, shifa soon and may they become well very soon, inshaAllah Azeem. And may dua for all those that are going through any other difficulties. Anybody else that has requested dua that they can remember or not remember, we're making dua for all of them. Allah ta'ala bless all of us with all our permissible and our jayas needs. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in His love and His love of His beloved Rasul.